Hi, I'm RJ Deerdeck. I'm the energy manager here at Fort Knox. What we're about to show you today is how Fort Knox has approached uh, eliminating our electrical losses that we experienced uh, in 2009 during an ice storm. What we have is one of 28 wells behind me. Those 28 wells harvest a large deposit of methane gas out from underneath the installation. They bring it up out of the ground and tie it into a piping system. That piping system is much like the branches on a tree. Those branches are then tied back together to the trunk of the tree on a larger piping system that takes all the gas from all 28 wells back to a central processing facility we're gonna show you next. We're here at the central processing facility and what we have is an accumulation of the 28 wells coming up through the ground in the white pipe you see behind me. That pipe is then moved over and the gas is processed through what's called our dehydrator. We're taking the water out of the gas at that point and the moisture content is removed. Then it moves on to our compressor. You can hear the compressor running. It is putting the gas under pressure so we can send it out to the rest of the installation. After the gas has been compressed, we're moving into this stage where we're gonna heat the gas and remove any of the remaining impurities. At that point, we're ready to odorize. This is our Mercapita station where the odorization is added to the gas. Um, Mercapita is the rotten egg smell that you might be familiar with when you smell natural gas. Natural gas in its normal state is odorless, but as our Fort Knox gas is coming in at this point, the Mercapita is added. We're also able to add it to our Texas gas that you see here on my left. That's a national pipeline that runs through the uh, installation as well, and we have it at this point ready to go and odorized as a backup to our Fort Knox gas. Over the years, we've adopted the use of alternative energy production methods, such as geothermal heating and cooling, as well as solar. This has allowed us to decrease our dependence on natural gas by more than half in our past 15 years. The resulting surplus has given us the opportunity to use the gas for more practical purposes, like powering the installation. Of course, this requires more specialized machinery and that's what we're going to show you next at one of our energy security project sites. The gas from our central processing facility is used in a variety of ways around the installation. A portion of that gas is sent to the six energy security sites like the one you see behind me. This site is located next to Fort Knox's Ireland Army Community Hospital. Let's take a look at how it works. The gas is pumped directly into several large generators, just like this one. Each generator powers a natural gas combustion engine that creates electricity. As with any gas engine, these generators produce large amounts of exhaust. We could just let that exhaust drift off up into the atmosphere, but that wouldn't be very efficient. Here we take those hot exhaust gases and use them to produce steam, heat, and even air conditioning for our buildings essentially for free. The silver piping you see running from the generator is the exhaust piping. It powers a steam boiler which produces the steam the hospital uses for sanitation purposes. Each generator is also being cooled by a water jacket. The white piping you see here is sending the hot water produced by the heat of the generator to a machine called an absorption chiller. This is where the magic truly happens. Inside this machine, a chemical called lithium bromide is converting heated water into chilled water by way of a chemical reaction. And we in turn use this chilled water to provide air conditioning to the hospital. This approach is called combined heat and power. Now that you've seen the nuts and the bolts of the process, let's take a look at the facility that brings it all together. We are now at the energy bunker. This facility allows us to remotely control all six energy generating facilities. Those facilities are computer controlled real time, allowing us to produce the power when it is most optimum. That power then saves us the largest amount of money and helps the local utility companies when they're under the most strain to produce power. Momentarily, we will demonstrate the capability of operating the entire installation on our own power making us energy secure, energy independent, and net zero. Stand by. 